crucial element in understanding economics. The world around us offers a tremendous variety of credit arrangements to us. A crucial issue of credit is its availability to all, especially to the poor, and on reasonable terms. Without such credit, a large section of the society would be kept out of the development process. Banks accept deposits from the public. Do you know what they do with the money collected? They keep only a small portion of their deposits, about 15%, as cash with themselves. This is kept as a provision for depositors who might need to withdraw cash from their accounts. Banks use the major portion of their deposits to extend loans. There is a huge demand for loans for various economic activities. In this way, banks mediate between those who have surplus funds the depositors, and those who are in need of these funds, the borrowers. Banks charge a higher interest rate on loans than what they offer on deposits. The difference between what is charged from borrowers and what is paid to depositors is their main source of income. A large number of transactions in our day-to-day -day activities involve credit in some form or the other. Credit, loan, refers to an agreement in which the lender supplies the borrower with money, goods or services in return for the promise of future payment. In rural areas, the main demand for credit is for crop production. Crop production involves costs for seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, water, electricity, repair of equipment, etc. It is a period of a few months from between the loan taken and the crop sold. Farmers usually take crop loans at the beginning of the season and repay the loan after harvest. Repayment of the loan is crucially dependent on the income from farming. In some cases, credit helps to increase earnings and therefore the person is better placed than before. In another situation, because of the crop failure, credit pushes the person into a debt trap. Whether credit would be useful or not, therefore, depends on the risks in the situation and whether there is some support in case of loss. Every loan agreement specifies an interest rate which the borrower must pay to the lender along with the repayment of the principal. In addition, lenders may demand collateral security against loans. Collateral is an asset that the borrower owns such as land, building, vehicle, livestock, deposits with banks, etc. These assets are used as a guarantee to a lender until the loan is repaid. If the borrower fails to repay the loan, the lender has the right to sell the asset or collateral to obtain payment. Interest rate, collateral and documentation requirement and the mode of repayment together comprise what is called the terms of credit. The terms of credit vary substantially 
from one credit arrangement to another. They may vary depending on the nature of the lender and the borrower. People obtain loans from various sources. The various types of loans can be conveniently grouped as formal sector loans and informal sector loans. Formal sector consists of loans from the banks and cooperatives. The informal sector includes loans from money lenders, traders, employers, relatives, friends, etc. It is the Reserve Bank of India that supervises the functioning of credit system in the formal sector. As you know, the banks maintain a minimum cash balance from the deposits they receive. It is the function of the RBI to monitor banks in actually maintaining cash balance. The RBI also ensures that the banks do not discriminate in giving loans by giving them only to profit making business, but also to small cultivators, small scale industries and other small borrowers. Unfortunately, there is no organization in the informal sector to supervise the credit activities. Lenders here claim any interest rate that they feel right and often we find unfair practices in such lending and recovering the said money. Compared to the formal lenders, most of the informal lenders charge a much higher interest on loans. Thus, the cost to the borrower of informal loans is much higher. Higher cost of borrowing directly means a larger part of the earnings of the borrowers is used to repay the loan. In certain cases, the high interest rate for borrowing can mean that the amount to be repaid is greater than the income of the borrower. This could lead to increasing debt and debt trap. Also, people who might wish to start an enterprise by borrowing capital may not do so because of the high interest on credit. This is why the formal sector needs to give more credit. This will help in many people borrowing for various needs and unfair practices could be curbed. Affordable credit is crucial for a society's development. Even today, banks haven't reached all across India. Even in cases a bank might be available, people find it difficult and cumbersome to go through the process as compared to getting a loan from the informal sector. In recent years, newer ways of providing loans to the poor have been envisaged and brought into practice. The idea is to organize rural poor, in particular women, into small self-help groups, SHGs, and collect their savings. A typical SHG has 15 to 20 members, usually belonging to one neighborhood, who meet and save regularly. Saving per member varies depending on their ability to save. Members can take small loans from the group itself to meet their needs. The group charges interest on these loans, but this is still less than what the moneylender charges. After a year or two, if the group is regular in savings, it becomes eligible for a waiving loan from the bank. Loan is sanctioned in the name of the group 
and is meant to create self-employment opportunities for the members. It is the group which is responsible for the repayment of the loan. Any case of non-repayment of loan by any fund member is followed up seriously by other members in the group. Due to this feature, banks are willing to lend to the poor women when organized in SHGs, even though they have no collateral as such. Not only do these groups help women to become financially self-reliant, the regular meetings of the group provide a platform to discuss and act on a variety of social issues such as health, nutrition, domestic violence, etc. Economic activities require loans or credit. Credit, as we saw, can have a positive impact or in certain situations make the borrower worse off. Credit is available from a variety of sources. These can be either formal sources or informal sources. Terms of credit greatly vary in its various terms between the formal and informal sector. It is essential that the total formal sector credit increases so that the dependence on the more expensive informal credit becomes less. These steps are important for development.